And doctor, what do you tell your patients who are hesitant? What do you say to them uh, in regard to this vaccine? And I'm not just also talking about just those that have asthma, because you as a pulmonologist know how oh. damaging COVID-19 can be to the lungs, period, even to anyway. a healthy human being. Right. Right. Anyone, right. exactly. But what do you say personally when they say, you know what, doctor, I just don't know. Um, I'm sitting back on this one. Yeah. And, and again, we, we always worry, obviously, when patients say that. And, and I try to be as understanding as I can initially, uh, because anything new sometimes can, can make people apprehensive. And, and this is certainly new. Everything about COVID is, is new. But I would also say that we have now known about COVID for over a year, um, and we know what a fatal disease it can be. Uh, we know how it attacks uh, vulnerable, certain vulnerable groups, and people with underlying disease are certainly in those vulnerable groups. But we also know that it randomly attacks people, and, and even people without obvious underlying disease or elderly age or, or whatever can, can uh, become victims. I think the, the side effects from all three of the currently available vaccines, the incidence rate of, um, of anything more than, you know, I feel a little achy for 24 to 48 hours is really pretty small. Um, and it's incredibly much smaller than your risk um, of contracting COVID and having a very adverse, if not uh, fatal outcome from, from COVID-19. So if you actually look at the, the numbers, you're, again, going to be much better off from the standpoint of your health and your long-term health. Um, if you get the vaccine with a small, small, small chance of, of some uh, rare, rare side effect, um, as opposed to putting yourself at continued risk of, of getting COVID um, without a vaccine. And I also want to include even uh, children. Uh, I, I know a lot of kids that are 15, 16, 17 that were very asthmatic. Your thoughts on teenagers today getting the vaccine? Yes? Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, teenagers should get the vaccine as well. And, and you know, teenagers are carriers. There's no doubt teenagers are, are carriers. And um, so I, I think uh, getting the vaccine, the, the chances that you're going to carry um, COVID-19 to another person, maybe a more vulnerable person, maybe a, uh, you know, a, a grandparent or whatever becomes much less um, once you're vaccinated. Absolutely. Thank you, doctor, for sharing that information with us. We have a video that I do want to share with our viewers. Uh, it's a few patients who talk about asthma and how it impacted their lives. Let's watch their personal stories. I had asthma pretty much since I was a little kid. And I wasn't able to do a lot of things that a lot of people could do, like gym class and things like that. When I was a kid, I really wanted to be an astronaut. And I found out that if you couldn't breathe properly, you probably couldn't be an astronaut. So there's one crush tree. I don't want to go to the hospital. I just want to play basketball, hang out with my friends, go to school. You know, I mean, I, I don't have asthma, so I don't know what he goes through, but you know, they've gave us, you know, good analogies. Just imagine putting a, a, a plastic bag over your head and try to breathe for 10 seconds and, you know, just, I couldn't imagine that. I live by the ocean, I wanted to surf. It always would get in my head, well, what if this happened when I was out on the water? It's there every day. It's like a light bulb that, that's glowing all the time. It's just a question of how bright the light is at any given point. And so we try to work with our families to help them reconceptualize the disease from an episodic disease that comes and goes to a chronic disease that the child lives with every single day. I don't go to the hospital as frequently as I used to. So our clinical research is really a partnership between the researchers and the patients. We can't do our research without them. And it's just a wonderful thing, having the security and that, that great feeling that you have a support system now I can exercise without panicking and I can sleep better. It has changed my life a great deal coming through this study. I learned so much. Sometimes now when I'm short of breath, I don't feel like I have to go hide. I, I don't have to say uh, I left something in my office and then not come back for 30 minutes. Oh, such touching stories, doctor. Uh, you had mentioned the gold standard treatment. Are there new treatments that you can talk to us about in, in the horizon? 
um, that there's actually, this is a golden era for asthma, actually. And, and every person really? with asthma should actually feel, I think, um, hopeful that, that we are having tremendous advances and actually being able to now much more customize treatment to the type of asthma that you have. And one of the things that has been very obvious over the last 20 years probably is that not all asthma is alike, that there are varieties of asthma and we can identify four or five different types of broad categories of, of asthma patients. And they respond differently to, to different treatments. So in the last um, five years now or so, we've had um, multiple different what we call biological therapies. These are very targeted therapies. They target just a very specific portion of the immune system um, in patients with more severe types of asthma. And these have been game changers for patients. I mean, literally patients who were taking um, oral steroids, things like prednisone or Medrol on a very frequent basis, don't need to take that anymore. Um, their lives have, have been changed. I think this has uh, really impacted the, the severity of asthma in many, many patients and allowed them to live normal lives. And of course, um, there's, a, there's at least one other of these uh, bio, biological uh, medications coming down the, the uh, path um, should be likely available within a year or so. And these are all injectable medications. So these aren't inhaled medications. They're not pills. And the, the other nice thing about them is you end up taking them uh, once a month, once every couple of months, once every couple of weeks. Uh, and that covers you for the time in between. You still have to take your, your inhaled steroids, but not necessarily at as high a doses um, and with, with certainly uh, less breakthroughs than you would before you uh, took these medications. So we're actually very excited about these very targeted, personal, what we call precision medicine approaches um, to treating patients with asthma.